Welcome to our next video. We talked about supply of money and the quantity theory of money. The quantity theory of money tries to explain the supply of money. So take a look at this equation. It's a very important equation, if, the, if not the most important equation of quantity theory of money. We have the money supply, be it M1 or M2 or whatever. We have the velocity of money. I'll explain later in what, just one minute what that would mean. And we have the real GDP, the real GDP, and we have the price level. So what is velocity of money? Velocity of money can be understood this way. P times Y, price level times real GDP divided by the money supply. So if you have, say, $200, your economy consists of $200 only. That's the amount of money that circulates in your economy. And you have a real GDP of $1,000. You have $1,000 of real GDP, you have $200 of money supply. So the velocity of money is 5. 1,000 divided by 200, meaning 5. A velocity of money of 5 means that you need your amount of money, five times, you need five, five times your amount of money to be able to buy real GDP in your economy. That's the way how to interpret, how to understand the velocity of money. So that's V. V, the velocity of money. Now, it's not only important to look at this equation, but to see how growth rates may interchange and how growth rates can be put into this equation. Going from here to there, we take the natural logarithm and to approximate the growth rates, we can just as well put this here. So the growth rate of money, the way money changes, the supply of money changes, plus the growth rate of velocity of money equals the sum of growth rate of real GDP, real gross domestic product, plus the growth rate of price level. And that's very, very important because central banks take a look at this equation once they try to set a goal because they can influence. What can central banks do? Central banks can influence this, can influence the growth rate of money. They cannot directly influence the price level. Not directly. Indirectly, yes, they try to do it, but not, they can't possibly do it directly. So, as we set this equation, and as we know that in the long run, the growth rate of velocity of money equals zero in the long run, we can just as well, just as well say the growth rate of money plus zero equals the growth rate of real GDP plus the growth rate of price level, which means all in all, if we change for the growth rate of price level, it is the difference. It is the growth rate of money minus the growth rate of the real GDP, which is again, again, very important because if you know that for the last year you had a growth rate of money of say 3% and a growth rate of real GDP of 2%, the difference is 3% minus 2%, which means 1%. So there would be a 1% growth rate in price level, a 1% inflation rate here. Or to put it differently, if you want to have, if you want to achieve 2% inflation rate and say in the long run it is zero, it, it is zero, this one is zero, the growth rate of velocity in the long run is zero. So given the fact that this might be 3%, right? 3% and you want to achieve 2% here. 2% would be affordable, which means you put 3% on the other side. On the left-hand side, you, you just subtract 3%, which means to get 2%, what do you need to have? What do you need to have? To have two here, minus three there, which means you have five. 5%, five percent, five percent is okay, is still okay. It is still okay to have a 5% raise in the, a 5% increase 
in the amount of money. That's important to know given this equation and given the quantity of money. Thank you for watching. Thank you.